In this video, I'm going to be replacing the rose bushes that are on either side of my arbor to my garden. I used to have New Dawn climbing roses there. I had them for about five years and they were beautiful. I will put a picture of what they look like um, after this clip. But unfortunately, after five years, they died and they didn't come back um, last summer. So we're going to remove the old New Dawn roses and plant them with thornless Zephyrine Jowan roses. So I'm starting on um, the dead rose bush on the side, but I just want to get up real close. Um, we're right in front of the chicken coop door here, but if you look real close, this is what would snag us. Look at these thorns. This is what would snag us as we were trying to get into the chicken coop. So the roses that I'm putting in here are Zephyrine Drowin. They are thornless. Okay, the second rose is out on the right. So now both sides are cleared out. So there's the right side and the left side. So both sides are cleared out. Um, the next step is I'm going to mix up some wet and forget and we're gonna spray the arbor and the fence and it'll get rid of that green algae and make it look good as new. Back inside my house, this is called Wet and Forget. It's moss, mild, mildew, algae stain remover. This stuff works great. We got it at Lowe's in the aisle that sells all the cleaning equipment, and it works great. You just literally wet down whatever it is that you need to clean and forget about it. It just um, takes care of the mildew and the algae. We've used this on our house um, the last couple of years, and it um, really cleans up that green algae that um, grows in our area. We have a lot of rain. So it's really easy. Um, it is one part of the wet and forget. So I'm going to do one cup of wet and forget. And I'm going to be putting it in my pressure sprayer and to five parts of water. So well, I have it all mixed up. It filled my pressure sprayer clear to the top. And um, there's a couple things I wanted to mention about the wet and forget. Um, you can repeat the treatment in one to two months if the algae grows back, but there's a warning not to use it more than six times a year. We have only ever used it once a year. That seems to be all that we've needed. We have never sprayed the arbor before, so it is a new area. I expect the wet and forget to work just as well on the arbor as it has on our house. So let's head back outside and spray down the arbor. So let's take another look at what we're gonna spray. I've never sprayed this arbor before, but you can see the algae going up it and on the fence and over here on the barn. So all we have to do is spray it, wet and forget. All right, also in the inside of the arbor where the lattice work is, there's just a lot of of that green algae.
after I mixed up the wet and forget and sprayed, um, we got hit with um, a lot of rain. It's been a couple of weeks. The wet and forget didn't do as good a job as I would have liked. So I ended up wiping down the entire arbor with Clorox wipes. So I want to show you how clean it looks. It looks like brand new. So I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll take a look. Okay, here is the left side. There's the fence that was all green. Just uh, wipe that down with Clorox wipes. And here's the arbor. Look at that. So I did wipe it down with Clorox wipes. Um, and that took me a while. But the whole structure is like brand new. It's so crisp and white. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. Um, even over on the right side here, everything is just crisp and clean. So let's talk about the roses that are going to go in here. The roses that I'm going to be planting are called Zephrine Drowan. They were introduced in the year 1868. They are a bourbon type of rose. They are a very vigorous grower. Their canes will grow up to 15 feet long. Zephrine Drowan roses are still popular today because they are mostly thornless. They're being used increasingly in construction and commercial sites, but I like them just because this is a, a high traffic area that I'll be planting them in, and I like that they're thornless and they won't catch on us. Now the Zephrine Drowan will grow a four inch deeply ruffled pink flower. Zephrine Drowan roses are hardy in U.S. zones 5 through 9. I garden in a zone 6, so that's one zone lower than my zone, so they should tolerate the winters here pretty good. You should allow for a lot of air circulation around the entire plant, and um, these roses will do good in partial shade. Zephrine Drowan roses do require a little bit of maintenance. You want to avoid overhead watering. Um, that can cause water spots. They are also prone to mildew and black mold, so they need to be sprayed. Also, they need to be deadheaded. They're not a maintenance-free rose, but I'm okay with that. Winter care for these roses are to rake and mulch around their roots. Then in late winter, you prune them back by one-third of the length of their cane. Fertilize in early spring with an all-purpose granular fertilizer do a second round of fertilizer after their first bloom and fertilize a third time in um, mid to late summer. Okay, so we're ready to plant the Zephrine Drowan roses in the ground. Um, you want to dig a hole that is just as deep as the can that they're in but twice as wide. This will allow the roots to have plenty of loose loamy soil to spread out in. I will be mixing up um, the dirt to fill back in with one part compost to two parts of the dirt that I take out. Okay, so I have my hole dug. It is one and a half times, two times as big as um, the flower pot. Also, it's deep enough so that the crown is level with the ground. The next thing we're gonna do is mix up some of the soil with the compost as the backfill when we plant the rows. So it's going to be two of these scoops of the dirt that we dug out of the hole to one scoop of compost. So we're just gonna fill this up. So there's one. Alright, so I'm going to be using cow manure and compost. Um, the reason why I went ahead and bought this is because if you um, have cow manure or horse manure available, it's not going to be sterile, so it's going to grow whatever seeds are already in the manure. This way, I know it's sterile, I don't have to worry about um, other things sprouting in this area with the rose. So that's why I went ahead and bought the bag compost. So let's get a scoop of the compost.
Okay, I'm going to continue um, to do this to fill up the cart so I have a good amount of the soil. So it's going to be um, two scoops of dirt to one scoop of compost. Okay, so I have a little bit of the mixture in my cart. So now we're going to blend um, the compost with the soil that we dug out of the hole. So we're just gonna mix that up and blend it. It's really looking good. I think the roses will really like this mix. So before I plant this green drowan, I'm going to put some rose food in the bottom of the hole and hopefully a little bit on the sides. So we're just going to sprinkle a little bit around and try to get it up on the sides as well. So here's the tag. The CO means climbing and the roses is the green drowan. And I'm going to take it out of the can and put it in the hole and then kind of arrange it so the taller um, canes are heading towards the arbor. That way it'll have plenty of air circulation and be able to grow up over. my Zafreen Joe and Rose in the ground. I've got the compost spread around it. So next step is to water it in well to remove any air bubbles. That whole process for the Sephir drown on the right side of the arbor. So I'll dig the hole as deep as the can but twice as big. I will mix up the compost with two parts of soil to one part compost. We'll add some rose fertilizer. We'll plant our rose and put the compost around it. Water it in and then we'll show you what it looks like when this area is done. So both Zafreen Jow and Roses are in the ground. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. Um, I do want to show you that the roses were in two different size nursery cans. So I put the larger rose on this side where there's more room. And I put the smaller rose on this side where there's a smaller space. And so let's take some, an up close look at how they turned out. So here's the Zafreen Jowan on the right. Um, I do want to point out the new foliage um, unfurls red and then ages to green so you get a lot of color on this one rose and then they will have a four inch blossom when they bloom but the foliage does turn out red so there's this rose on the right here is the Zafreen Jowan rose on the left Look how nice that looks with the mulch it's all mulched in and check out the bloom. Isn't that beautiful? So I can't wait to watch these grow up over the arbor over time. I really enjoyed the new dawn roses. Um, they were just about to meet at the top when they died. So I look forward to many years of beautiful blooms from these Zafreen Jowan roses. Thank you so much for watching this video on Zafreen Jowan Thornless Roses. I hope that you were able to learn something and maybe be inspired to try something new in your own landscape. Please subscribe to Rosebank Farm. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.